10 Democratic senators in states that Trump won. And one of them is a senator from right here in West Virginia. It's Joe Manchin, a former governor turned senator, met with the president-elect on Monday in Trump Tower and characterized his meeting as productive and informative. Manchin was under consideration to be Trump's Secretary of Energy. That job ended up going to another former governor, this one from Texas, Rick Perry. But Manchin said in a statement yesterday that he will stay in the Senate, where he is up for re-election in 2018. Senator, thanks for coming here. Good to be with you, Chuck. Well, it's good to be in your home state. Yes, it's, um, it's, trust me, it's good for me to be in my home state. I'm sure this it is. This is where I like to be. Um, Secretary of Energy, why did you uh, take the interview? I thought it was uh, anything I can do to, to propel my state, mm -hmm. and energy is something that you know, that's what we're all about, and I think you've been able to observe that firsthand. No doubt. And I had a chance to go there and talk about our miners' protection bill we've been fighting for, right. and we fought right up to the last minute. We're going to get that done, and that's something we need to do. Uh, uh, President-elect Donald Trump has won every uh, every coal region in the United States, not just West Virginia, but he won West Virginia overwhelmingly. Mm -hmm. And he wants to help coal miners. So I wanted to make sure, I wanted to look at him and talk to him and make sure that we were on the same path. Got to get this done, got to get the miners protection, right. and we got to find a pathway forward so we can have a balanced energy policy with coal in it. What does that look like? I mean, I know everybody talks about, and I've talked to miners here, and they're all, the, the thing they're most excited about, they assume a whole bunch of regulations are going away. Is that the magic? Well, there was an overreach. Elixir? There was definitely an overreach. I've always said that. It was kind of a nuisance. Now, what happens is all West Virginians want clean water and clean air like everybody else in America. But there's a balance to be had. We built this country on the energy we produced right here. So we're looking for that balance again. But they've overreached. And, and President Obama and his administration, which I've been at odds at from day one, right. they overreached. And basically that shut us down. So don't tell me you're for the working person when you really are basically stopping the working person from working. Do you have any concern about overpromising, though, to coal workers, where they I'm, sit there I'm, and they think, okay, we finally got what, yeah. what we've been asking for, and we're going to get it, but... My concern is yeah. this, and, and, and really, reality, we know that the low price of natural gas coming on, just an absolute wash on the market, and the energy market has had an effect and will. We've ridden the, the low and high tides of market changes. We've done that many, many years in my lifetime. But we've never had the federal government jump on our back and try to hold us under the water while we were trying to swim right. or just trying to tread. That's what that's what we feel like. And I said so this is going to so you get rid of these regulations. It's going to allow the coal industry to, to tread water again. It allow it allow it us to stabilize. Now can it grow? Well, it can only grow basically. FERC. This is so intertwined. Yeah. The Federal Energy Regulation Commission determines on how energy comes onto the grid. Yeah. If they're only looking at basically the cheapest way on the grid and not reliable and dependable, coal's the most reliable, dependable, and affordable energy up until this glut of natural gas but there has to be a balance and what we've said give us a chance to survive uh, the coal plants that scares me they closed so we don't have the markets we had before so even with all of the ability for us to go back and mine we've lost a lot of markets through these last eight years they just shut down and changed over to cheap gas so there's a challenge what does west virginia's economy look like in 30 years We've got to diversify, and here's the thing. We've got to have broadband high speed throughout. For West Virginia to succeed, we're a rural state. We're a mountain state, as you can see. It's hard to get the signals. We've got But I've been hearing about the promise of rural broadband. It started with George W. Bush. It's Barack Obama talked about it's it. It's a shame. Why, it's really why, what's the holdup? Well, there's the money. They won't commit. I thought we, we had can't. a new tax. Well, we were supposed yeah, to have that little, tax. like, a quarter oh. of a penny or whatever. Oh, yeah, it, it went yeah. all right. It went right to the urban areas again, too. So we finally got Tom Wheeler here, the head of FCC, right. and got him down here, took him in the most desolate rural area we had. Which you said, had, open your phone, right? <laughs> couldn't get anything. Yeah. We couldn't get a thing. Up in Pocahontas, Tucker County, and Tom says, I'm committed to getting that rural band money back to you. Without that, it's the market's not there. We don't have the population base. But if you ever want to stop poverty, you've got to give people connectivity. And that's the thing that does it. What role do you want to play for Donald Trump in the United States Senate? My role, I want to play for the United States of America, but also basically to make the Senate work again. I've been there for six years, it hasn't worked, mm -hmm. and I've been miserable. A lot of other senators have been miserable, and I'm being brutally honest. Yeah. And I, uh, I Why'd got, you stay? Why are you staying? I got, I've got, uh, I've a lot of people wanted you to run for governor, and you probably would have won. I've got a lot of uh, hope and faith that, that my friend and uh, Chuck Schumer is going to change and give us that new spark that we need and basically allow us to, you know, I'm different. I am not a Washington Democrat. If you've been in West Virginia, West Virginia Democrats are different. 
And with that being said, you know, we still believe in hard work. We believe in helping everybody that needs help. But by, get off your butt and do something. Right. You know, don't wait for a handout. So this is where we are. I think we're going to be able to say, fine, I can go over and talk to Paul Ryan. I can go over and talk to Mitch McConnell and his mm -hmm. team. I know John and I know Kevin McCarthy, all these people. I know now the Trump team. I've been up and spent a little time and felt very comfortable. I think he wants to really do something. Are you still comfortable being a West Virginia Democrat? Absolutely. I'm, I'm comfortable who I am. And if, if, if I change my, I'm branded. Right. Okay. My identity is a Democrat. My brand is very independent. That's who I am. Why do I have to change my identity just to think I'm somebody different? Right. And I've told him that. So. Keith Ellison or Tom Perez come up to you and say, Senator Manchin, help us reach out to rural America, uh, coal country. What, would, what advice do you give them? Well, let's get a chairman from rural America coal country. <laughs> you think that's a problem yet? Would be, you would like a third choice. I here. wouldn't like another choice, absolutely. Uh, and I think, basically, it's speaking from a rural Democrat, from a rural yeah. state, that's getting our brains beat in because Washington doesn't listen to us. The Democrats in Washington don't really speak for us. Mm -hmm. uh, it's hard for them now to represent us, and that's hard. So you've got to fight to be a Democrat in West Virginia today. Why did Bernie Sanders do better than Hillary Clinton here? What did Bernie get? about West Virginia that Hillary Clinton didn't? You know, I, 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 have, uh, I have a hard time explaining that one because I really don't get it either, Chuck. I don't, I don't understand. You think either. showing up? Here. I think part of it was showing up and caring about, you know, he was People speaking People want change so bad. How did yeah. Donald Trump do so well everywhere? I mean, how, not just in the areas we knew it. He was going to win West Virginia. I right. knew that from day one. And you know what? But did you think he was going to win it by the no. biggest margin no, in the history no, of the I did state? not. I did not. I did not, and, and, and he didn't either. We were talking, we were talking about that. He said, I want it big, and I told him, he told me how big he thought he wanted it at first, right. 35, 37. I said, I think he wanted a little bit bigger than that, and so he was surprised at that. But anyway, uh, people were so mad, and I keep, and I felt it, they get mad at everybody. Anybody's right. got mad at me and everybody else is up there, if you're elected, and they want to change. And they basically didn't think that anyone would bring them change that had been there. Right. Well, Bernie's been there for a long time, he just didn't know it. Right. And Bernie spoke, spoke of all these things against Wall Street. They got bailed out. When you think about it, Wall Street got bailed out. Oh, I heard this from the coal guys today. The they miners. got bailed out. They, uh, they and we couldn't me. even take care of our coal miners. Auto worker, they, yeah, everybody what the got miners said. Everybody. Auto workers gets bailed out, bankers get bailed out. How come us we didn't get bailed and they, out? And we didn't even ask for bailout. We had the money to pay for it. They had no money. Quick senatorial question. Rex Tillerson, uh, his relationship with Putin, right. is that a problem for you? That, that specifically is not a problem for me, mm -hmm. and I'll tell you the reason why. You've got to have relationships. We haven't had any dialogue at all. I spent some time over in, in, in Germany, and I went over for a, a Russian conference. Yeah. Why? And, and I started talking to some of them, and became pretty friendly with a couple, and I said, what's wrong? I said, it's the Cold War. They said, the Cold War is colder today than it was when it was on. Yeah. And they said, no one's communicating. That's our job. We're the leaders of the free world. We've got to reach out to these people. With well, that being said, I'm concerned about Rex. They say, follow the money. Yep. That's always I hear, follow the money. I don't know how intertwined his dealings, his personal and his... And this is going to matter to you as this... Well, I think from that standpoint, you want to make sure that the person basically is going to say, well, no matter what, it's about America. It's about the security of our country. It's about basically the things we believe in. It's not about, do I protect my investment so when I retire, I've got this, this, and this in place. Those are the things I hear a lot of my fellow Democrats Democrats speaking about. Him having a relationship, no. Maybe we need that relationship to someone who can talk to him. But I hope they can say no to him. Uh, you know, and I think, I know Rex. And I know Rex from this standpoint. Mm -hmm. He has the, the heart of a lion. He really does. And he has the compassion, too, because I watched him with the Boy Scouts. He come down. He's very big. He's an Eagle Scout. Very big in the Boy Scout movement. Mm -hmm. So we got together on that. We put the Scout camp in. So we'll see you I'm going to leave it there. Okay. Good to see you, sir. Thank you.